Okay, good morning everybody. Welcome to our Bible study and this time during this divine service we'd like to share something that is very very important. This is our family ministry connecting people to God. How are you today? We worship the living God. Today is Sabbath and we rest from our labors both physical and mental and we have a sumptuous uh, time for our great creator our god in heaven i'd like to say happy happy sabbath to everybody especially to all my relatives and to all my friends who join us in our worship to a living god for our study i could i'd like to share to you my great memories with my late father who really preached and he was a layman and he was a preacher and I'd like to share some verses that he used to share especially during the time when he was still alive and he was uh, passionate really to tell people about the second coming of Jesus Christ. I could just remember that most of the topics that he was talking is the preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ and also he was talking about heaven and I hope that all members of our family will be blessed and also all my children and my brothers and sisters will always remember the important things that our father really try us to to remember and it's really something that will inspire us in our journey especially as we wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So at this very moment, I'd like to share some favorite of my late father Bible verses. And I know that you're familiar with this. And one that I always, uh, I always hear him quoting is found in Revelation chapter 14. Chapter 14, 1 to 3. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And I go to prepare, prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself. This is in verse 3. I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. I could just imagine a melodious voice and he was shouting, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. And he tried to emphasize verse 3 of this chapter 14. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you and to myself. And he tried to reinforce this statement of Jesus Christ in the statement that uh, John, the Revelator, has stated in the book of Revelation chapter 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 7. This is John telling the people after many years that Jesus ascended to heaven and John was one of the disciples and he really saw passionate in telling people about Jesus Christ and the promise of the final kingdom during his coming. And he said in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, and they who pierce him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, Amen. Yes, behold, he is coming in the clouds, and every eye, my friends, shall see him. And that's really so inspiring. And I said, I'm sharing only these two verses about what my father used to quote during the time when he was preaching, during the time when he was working as a lay person, and he was uh, giving Bible study 
he always reiterated, reiterated that we are really our, our final hope is the second coming of Jesus Christ. And today, at this very moment, I'd like really to remind you, you know, we keep on reminding and reminding the same as we keep on eating. Two days ago, we forget about our breakfast, what we ate during our lunch. And so we keep on eating, eating to sustain us, to give us strength. And so this is also in our journey going to that heavenly home, we keep on repeating and reminding you of the great and wonderful promise of Jesus Christ that He is coming and there is a place that He is preparing for us. Yes, life in this, this world is hard. Much more during our time. And I was listening to the, what the exposition about the prophecy and the experience that we have about this virus. And we are hoping that this will end. But this is just the beginning according to some of the, those who study, especially the book of prophecy. This is just the beginning of the time of trouble. And the Bible makes it clear that as we are nearing to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, there will be time of trouble never have experienced by people before. And it is in the book of Revelation labeled as the Jacob's time of trouble. So our hope is in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to quote Campbell Morgan who says, the second coming is a perpetual light on the path which makes the present bearable. Without this promise that He is coming again, without the promise of the beautiful heaven, that there is life eternal, that there is no suffering in that place that God is preparing for us, then we could not really bear the sufferings and the problems that we are experiencing. And I think Campbell is right when he says the second coming is a perpetual light on the, on the path which makes the present bearable. That's why I really pity those who don't understand and those who don't have hope and they don't believe about the second coming who have never heard about the second coming. They think that we should eat and be merry today because tomorrow when we are gone, we will be gone forever. But mind you, Jesus Christ redeem us from our sins by dying on the cross and that after redemption he was victorious against sin and when you are in Jesus Christ then we'll become victorious with him and he is promising to come again. Yes, he ascended to heaven and he gave the promise. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. And he told us that this is really true, because if this is not true, he will not tell us about that. And when he prepared a place for us, when he is prepared a place for us, he will come again. So it's more than 100% true. And I just impress me, especially during this month of March, about uh, when we celebrated supposed to be the 90th birthday of my father. And it really flashed to me during my childhood time of the expression of the face of my father really convincing people that there is hope and that hope is the coming in the coming of Jesus Christ our Lord, the second coming. And that will make actually the present bearable. It's a perpetual light on the path that we are treading at this present time. So friends, it is very important that we should be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And there are many, many people are asking, yes, I long for that heavenly home. But sometimes we become so afraid. Why? Because what if I'm not prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ? And there are two groups of people during the second coming of Jesus Christ. Those people who are not in the side of God and those people who are in the side of God. In fact, the big event during the second coming of Jesus Christ is 
that there will be a resurrection morning. You know, when a person dies, he sleep, he has no consciousness, he does not notice the passing of time. That's why the wise man said it doesn't matter we die young or we die old because when we die, we are in the common place, we don't have consciousness, we go back to the state of nothingness. But you know, the big event during the second coming of Jesus Christ is that when He comes, there will be a great resurrection morning. It is recorded in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 to 17. That's the important event during the second coming of Jesus Christ. And it says that the dead in Christ shall rise first with the sound of archangel and with a trumpet and to Jesus Christ descending from heaven together with his thousand and thousand of angels and with the sound of archangel and with a trumpet then the dead in Christ shall rise first. So during the second coming of Jesus Christ, there are two groups, those who don't accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and they don't have hope. And that is, for the wages of sin is death. And the kind of death, when there is no Jesus Christ, when you don't accept Jesus Christ, when you don't have relationship with Jesus Christ, because the only payment for sin that we could escape eternal death is the death of Jesus Christ and having relationship with Jesus Christ. So how can we prepare for the second coming? Ah, uh, it's not so complicated, friends. It's not only about trying to become good for us to be prepared for the second coming. You will be frustrated. And there's the very secret in the preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Open your Bibles, open your Bibles to uh, John chapter 15. John chapter 15 and come and read with me. Chapter 15 and we will be reading up to verse 5. Okay, let's start reading from verse 1. It says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit you are already clean because of the word that which i have spoken to you then important thing to remember especially in these verses this is also the key in the preparation for the second coming of jesus christ it's a decision to connect with him okay let's read chapter, uh, still in the same chapter, verse 4. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. And what's the fruits? The fruit of good character and a fruit that could be developed especially for the second coming of Jesus Christ. What's the secret? The secret is abide in me and I in you. Friends, you can only be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ in that big event you will be in the sight of God when daily you make a decision to connect with God. It's a decision. Yes, you try to become good, but you become so frustrated. But the key to that really the development of our character is practice your will, practice your choice, practice your decision, every day yes you been baptized in jesus christ but daily eat of his word and daily make an awareness make a decision to abide with christ so if you want to be prepared for the second coming of jesus christ the advice is that here in the reading of the bible that we should abide in him make a decision to connect with Him. How can we abide with Jesus Christ? 
It's a daily decision. And in um, beautiful book, Steps to Christ, the advice is that make it a point really to focus your minds and your thinking, especially early part of the morning or every day you are doing your activities, you are doing business, you are doing many good things or many activities for the day, but let your mind always focus and have the awareness of the presence of Jesus Christ. Abide in me and I in you. In the morning, do not saturate your minds with the problems by looking at television. In the morning, do not saturate your minds with the news. And usually, when you open your television and your cell phone and your internet, looking what happened to this world, you'll become discouraged. The Bible injunction is that for the preparation of the second coming of Jesus Christ, when you wake up, in the morning, saturate your minds with the promises of God. Memorize promises from the Bible. Review the suffering of Jesus Christ. Review His special gift of giving His only begotten Son in order for us to live forever. How to abide? It's a decision really to eat. It's a decision to connect. I just love, you know, when the sun is not still rising and about to rise and come amidst nature and abiding with Christ. And you'll be surprised that many of our problems during the day, we could cope it. And even the observance and obedience of the laws of God, it's not an obligation, but you do it with delight. You don't tell a lie. You don't kill somebody. You do not covet and other things. And you keep the Sabbath holy, not as a requirement, but as a result of your connection with Jesus Christ. The only way that we could be saved is only through Jesus Christ, not by works, but it, uh, our connection will be reflected in our lifestyle in our character. Many of the problems of people today, why they could not cope with the many challenges in life and they are bearing heavy laden because before they face their business, they are not facing God. If you want to cope with your problems and you want to be ready every day to for the second coming of Jesus Christ, seek and abide with God first. Abide with me and I in you because without you, you cannot do anything. So I'm talking now heart to heart to members of our family. What are you being busy every day? Do you make it a point to start the day with God? You now I had a program that says this day with God in the registration. And, and the introduction is in informal Tagalog, telling and encouraging people really to start the day with God. You cannot cope with the stresses of life. You cannot be prepared for the second coming. What if this afternoon Jesus will come? Are you ready? Are you ready for His coming? What are you being busy? Face and abide with Jesus. He is the only one that can save you. And amazingly, when you are, you develop a relationship with Him, then you do and keep the Sabbath as a delight. You have no other gods. You don't put, you don't make your money as your God, but God in heaven is your God. And the money is just the resources for us to use. Some people are not ready because they have wrong choice, they have wrong decision. And I'd like to quote one important reminder that I saw in a Facebook that says, we are born without bringing anything. Okay, listen carefully. We are born without bringing anything. Can you remember during your birth? 
you have not brought anything in this world. And mind you, mind you, we die without taking anything. But the sad thing is that the, in the interval between life and death, we fight for what we did not bring and what we will not take. Remember this. Again, I'd like to read this past. We are born without bringing anything and we die without taking anything. And the sad thing is that in the interval between life and death, we fight, we spend all our energies for that things that we did not bring and what we will not take during our death. So our greatest hope, as I said in the beginning, that I always remember the expression of my father, the late father, that he was really passionate in telling that Jesus is coming again. Without that message, my friends, life is like an empty veil between the peaks of two eternities. We are hopeless. I hope that we are always in the preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And to summarize what we are telling, the greatest hope that we have, why many of our problems become bearable because of the inspiration that we will not stay here forever. Jesus is coming again. During the times in the 70s, my father was shouting, his coming is very near. How much more today? I'd like to shout, his coming is very near. Are you ready for Jesus to come? And a very simple thing that I reminded you and me today. If you want to be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ, if you would want to develop your character into a beautiful one, the very secret is connect with the source of life. Abide with me and I in you. Without me, you cannot do anything. Strive to become good without Jesus, without the connection with Jesus Christ, you will become frustrated. Abide in me and I in you. And in abiding means that the constant decision to connect with Jesus Christ. Especially early part of the morning, we start the day with Him. Kung paano ang bulaklak ay umaharap sa araw, upang ang maliwanag na sinag ay makakatulong sa pagpasakdal ng ganda at hukis niya, gayon din dapat tayo'y humarap sa araw ng katwiran upang bumoti ang ating likas at makatulad ng sakay Kristo. And we are ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. May the good Lord bless us today, especially as we have the celebration of the Sabbath. This Sabbath is not uh, earning our salvation. It is helping us in our connection and abiding with Jesus Christ and always remembering that He is our Creator. He is a lover of our souls. He is God who is promising to come again and bring us in the final restoration of this world and world without sin and world with total happiness and never people will never grow old and we will be with Jesus having fellowship. That's why abiding with Jesus today is the key for us to be in heaven someday. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Thank you very much, Heavenly Father. Thank you for reminding us that you died for us and then he, you promised to come again. You were victorious against sin. And when we connect ourselves to you, we'll become victorious and ready for your second coming. I pray for the double blessings to be given to those who listen to me at this very moment. Kindly inspire them, Lord, through the Holy Spirit. I'm your servant. I'm only an instrument to remind people and to remind me that there is you, a God in heaven, and no other gods. You are a superior God. You are the only source of life. Sometimes we make a mistake of trusting material things, but you are God, a God who cares for us. I pray, Lord, kindly 
keep uh, give us peace of mind. Just in case that there are some who listen to me who are of troubled heart, kindly bless them, Lord, and give them peace and joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us in our study. Today is a very special day. Six days thou shalt do all thy labor and don't be tempted really not to believe because you'll enjoy your relationship with God when you have a solid day contemplating of His goodness. You know, our business and other things are just transient. Discipline your mind and make a choice to abide with Jesus Christ, especially every Sabbath day, every morning, every day, every second, and every minute of your life. Thank you. Thank you very much, especially to our uh, relatives and especially to those group who are following me in the school in Pulomolok, South Cotabato, and to all our my sisters and brother. God bless each one of you.